normal distribution. So now we're going to define a new uh, distribution. X is distributed according to normal distribution <laughs> with parameter mu and sigma. So again, we're going to define density function.
Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, this distribution a little bit, but first um, I want to define it in, in the multivariate case. Okay, so this is a, a scalar of the variable. So let's look what is it. Let's first define. So let's leave this for now. <coughs> let's define a uh, multivariate random variable. A multivariate. is a function that goes from our probability state, but not to the real number, but to a vector of the number. So it's basically many uh, single variable random variables. Okay, what? Uh, and then we have the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix of a multivariate. Defined to that the if the IJ coordinate of the matrix will be the covariance between the I and J coordinate of uh, X. Okay, so we have one multivariate random variable, which is a vector of random variables, that's one of two x three, and we define a, a covariance matrix, which is a coordinate ij, we will read the covariance between random variables xi and random variables xj. Okay, so let's look at the can define not only normal distribution over a single variable, random variable, but also on multivariate random variables. So, what sigma? Yeah, what's that? Sigma is a matrix. The covariance matrix sigma. Okay? And this is how it is. Do you don't sum anything over there? Sum? Ah, no, it's not sum. Yeah, okay. This is not sum. This is sigma. Okay, a multivariate random variable. Determinant 
This is a density function. It's one mm -hmm. two five mm -hmm. square root of the determinant of the function. for determinants. Well, it's what? The power of what? what? The power of all? T, ah, the T here stands for this. So this is a vector. And we... Okay, so let's look at what each object is here. So remember that X is a multivariate random variable, so the values here are vectors. Okay? So x mu is also a vector, and x minus mu is a vector. So you have a vector, a, a column vector, and you multiply it from the left in a matrix, with a matrix, so we need to take a transpose. So this is a matrix, and now you have the vector x minus mu on this side. This is x minus mu. This is the matrix sigma, and if you want to multiply it from the left, you need to take the row vector x minus mu. So it's x minus mu, but Okay? So what you get, you have an n by n matrix, n by one vector, and then one by n vector. So multiplying all this together, what will you get? A scalar. A one by one matrix, which is a scalar. So the exponent of minus half times the scalar. So it is defined. It is a number, and uh, the term square root of the determinant. Ah, n n divided by two. N is the the side of the of the multiple. So this is a uh, multivariate random variable. This is not the same, by the way, that every component, that you have a vector, that every component is Gaussian.
You don't divide it by one time. Divide, divide by the variance. By the variance, so it's not for so it's not in the why is Sigma in that case, in a single variable case, it's a single nature to be the variance. So why do you want to take the inverse? Because you just need to divide the variance. But I divide what's in the variance. In the exponent. Sigma is Why are we interested in the Gaussian uh, distribution? So I'm going to take the law of large numbers. Okay, so everything I talk about a uh, single variable Gaussian uh, distribution, but it's going to be Analog results are also true for the multivariate case. Let xi be a sequence of independently Identically distributed the right portion of I, I, B, random variables. standard deviation sigma, which is the same as saying variance sigma squared. The, the standard deviation is square root of the variance. It's the same. Uh, okay. So let's just see if we understand the statement. So we have xi random variance that behave the same. They have the same uh, distribution, the nulli, binomial, normal, whatever you want, and they are independent. So meaning the probability of x equals certain value, and the probability of y equals certain value is the product of this uh, number. I mean, 
identically distributed, it means that let's say the tides are good or the tides are good. Ah, okay. Good. Okay. 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 No, okay. No, not <laughs> uni- okay. Akhida is the uh, uniform distribution. Ah, okay. 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 I, I'm not making an ass- the mu and, and sigma are not an assumption. I'm simply saying they have denoting the expectation and standard deviation, but you will see, because we we'll, we'll need it for the same. If they have a standard deviation, then it means that the same mu and same sigma, same all moments, all the moments. I'm, I'm denoting the, I'm not assuming that they have the same expectation. I already assume. I'm simply noting, denoting the expectation by mu. the empirical mean. is defined as the random variable X bar n equals it says the n of n in the pair. Okay? So n is going to be this number. X bar n is simply the um, average of all these uh, random variables. Okay, so I have n random variables, and now I'm defining a new random variable, which is to sum the n random variable and divide by n. So it has, this is not the same. It has uh, the following expression to the variant. So what is the expectation of uh, x bar n? No. The expectation of x bar n <coughs> is new. We can, again, we can use linearity. Xi, each xi is expectation new. So we have New. And the variant of Xn, what, what is that going to be? Yeah, it's going to be sigma squared uh, divided by uh, n squared. So we now have, so even if they have this and the variables have very, very large deviations. So even if they have large deviation, know that this random variable has a much smaller deviation from its expected value. And you can even so say something stronger. The weak law weak law of large number says that I'll say what it means exactly with both So, and by this, the, the 
mean that the probability of Xn being further than the expectation by more than epsilon it won't be far further away than epsilon in the expectation converted to one for every epsilon. When you put in the for n x bar, then the for very big n. What? No, it's just yeah. okay. Yeah. Only for for very big n. Yeah. yeah. yeah when n goes to six. And what is x n to you? It's probability. What is x n to you? I mean, what is what's the meaning of with probability? So this is ah okay. This is what. That with high probability, it won't be um, much of the mm -hmm. You can even say something stronger. Yes. Xi. Uh, I I and the variable then the probability of Well, it is uh, the commodity distributed function of the normal distributed standard value. Basically, what it means if you take a lot of uh, independent events and you look at, at the at their empirical average, what you get is a new random variable that roughly behaves like a normal distribution. Again, if we look at any distribution, do we get a normal distribution? Okay. If the, if it, so, okay, let's take a look. Say I randomly. Uh, a coin and get one if it helps. I win a dollar if it's, if it's a head and I lose a dollar if it's a So at each round, I have a probability half and probability minus. And I, but I play this game a lot of times and I look at the random variable, which is my expected game. How much am I going to uh, get from this? So what this says is that basically this random variable will behave like a normal distribution. We'll have expectation zero and we'll uh, default zero from uh, zero according to Gauss distribution. So even though each event is very different from Gauss distribution, the, the sum of all of them is roughly uh, like uh, Gauss distribution. So this is strong This is is it right for any distribution, only the normal distribution? No, no, any. Okay. The, all, all that has to happen is that they are, all the all the random power should be identical. So if one is Bernoulli and one is a binomial and one is Poisson, then we don't, oh. the statement doesn't say anything about that. No, identically and identically. And identically. Well, if they weren't, in, obviously if they weren't independent, 
Theta, for example, is all the time are the same, have the same value, but obviously it uh, will not convert to gas because the all the oil for another value. So this is Okay, and this is why uh, Gaussian distribution is so important. Because many times we have some processes that are uh, defined by some other processes that are happening below, and then what we say justifies is the fact that we will model this uh, behavior as like a Gaussian distribution. So it roughly behaves like that. So now we're going to change a little bit subject. We're going to discuss Bayesian decision making, which you already got with a mirror a little bit. We are going to decide if we are, on, we are going to talk about deciding between <coughs> two or states. So we call it in Bayesian decision making. We have a world state, we have some probability over the world state, and we have an observation, x. And given x, we want to decide on the world state. Okay? And now we're going to talk about the case where we have exactly two world states. Okay, so given. Type one. False positive. by alpha and it is the probability of deciding W one when in fact the two state is W zero and the side two was negative By beta, and it gives the probability to decide W0 when it's a not conditions on the fact that it is actually 
Okay, so I, I have to I see an observation and I have to make a decision. Either one say W0 or W1. So why do you mean the square term limit? What if you have some mean? Just mean. Hmm? Ah. Mm -hmm. So Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we we basically can make one of two errors. Either we will decide to accept the null hypothesis. So W is the null hypothesis. You can either accept it when you certainly shouldn't have accepted it or uh, reject it when you shouldn't have rejected it. And we denote the two possible errors. In the continuous case, we look at the density function, or in the distance case, we look at, at the, and we verify that this is larger than the probability of W1, the loss. Okay, so in Bayesian uh, decision making, this will be the optimal decision if I want to minimize this loss. So what will be the false positive, the alpha and beta in, in these cases? D0 will be all the set where I give. So this is my decision. So this is where the set where I accept. So let me know this by T. What do you mean by this? Lambda 1, 1. Ah, so I have a loss function in lambda. So, so by lambda ij, I mean the loss of deciding what state <coughs> i given what state, that given that the true world state is j. Okay, so it's my loss in the
You want to go? Or not? You want to stop? Stop? Fine. Thank <laughs> you. 